they can afford to live here. Thank you very much. Next question. Nashville's uh, six-month trial period for license plate readers is up on July 22nd. The Metro Police say that these LPRs have been a powerful tool in their fight against crime. Specifically, police say more than 70 stolen cars have been recovered, more than 80 people arrested. That's just in the few months they've been using them. But preliminary data from the Community Oversight Board found that the program may be unfairly targeting minority communities. Do you support the continued use of license plate readers in Nashville? And we'll begin with Heidi Campbell. So license plate readers in and of themselves are not a bad thing and they can be very useful, but we do need to make sure that they're being employed in a way that does not in any way discriminate against um, any group of people. And um, that is a problem, and that's something that we have to address. It's, um, it's consistent with all of the other issues that we're looking at with public safety right now, um, and especially employing technology in public safety, which is a good thing if we do it um, with deliberation and making sure that we are putting in um, safety parameters so that people are not discriminated against and so that we do not abuse that. Um, and so I think smart cities technology in general, which LPRs is a part of, um, is a very important thing for us to look at because the efficiencies that we can gain from um, making sure that our emergency response process is as quick as possible are, are so great. Um, that having been said, like anything else, it requires that we think very carefully about how we're doing it and make sure that nobody is getting hurt in the process. Matt Wilcher. Nashville simply isn't as safe as the city that I grew up in. And we saw terrible acts of violence over this 4th of July weekend. Um, when a city is no longer safe, the other things don't matter. Um, it is vital that we have great schools and affordable places to live. But if this isn't a safe city, everything else falls apart. And far too many people have been victims of crime in this city. Um, it is a terrible tragedy. Um, it's interesting that you mentioned and appropriate that you mentioned the Community Oversight Board. I think utilizing tools like license plate readers to help identify uh, crimes and, and perpetrators of crimes and bring them to justice is important. But it is also important that our police department, which has performed exceptionally in many cases, but has been under-resourced for far too long in this city, it's important that we have trust in the police department. And the Community Oversight Board played a vital role in that. I think the move by the state to overturn what was passed by the citizens of Nashville was absolutely the wrong thing and erodes trust and makes the citizens less comfortable with things like license plate readers. So these are integrated into each other. We need to have transparency and accountability so that we can trust the folks who are protecting us. We need to make sure that we have a fully staffed police department because if the city isn't safe, everything else falls apart. Real quick follow. So would you support the continued use of them? Absolutely. With oversight and making sure that there are safeguards protecting the, the citizens of Nashville. Thank you. Sharon Hurt. For me, I am still pondering over this because this became personal for me. For the first um, part of the license plate readers, I guess a couple of years ago when we started talking about them, I voted no each time for the very reasons that the Community Oversight Board stated. And this last time, the final reading of it, I abstained. And many people wondered why. And, I, and it was because in Memphis they do have license plate readers and I had a nephew who was killed and they found the killer by a license plate reader. So I have a personal connection and I do believe that they can be useful but they have to be appropriately used. I worked with the Haynes Park community and we were able to purchase cameras for them. We got a grant from MDHA and I think that they can be used. I know Bell Mead has readers. So I believe that it's useful to have them, but we have to make sure that they do not discriminate and target a certain group of individuals. Because we've got to put hope into each one of those people that we see. When you get to the root of it, you get to the fruit of it. And we've got to restore that hope and prosperity on every block 
in every community and not leave one behind. Thank you. Jim Gaither. So we do have a real safety issue in Nashville. Our violent crime rate is 80, 90, or more percent higher than cities I would consider peers, like a Charlotte or an Austin. Our homicide rate 10 years ago was just over 6 per 100,000. Last year it was over 16 per 100,000. Our rate of car theft has doubled. This is an issue that we have to be more serious about. We do need to properly fund and resource the police force, and that includes technology. In 2020, it took, us not, took the police force 9.2 minutes to respond to a shooting. Last year, it was 16 and a half minutes. LPRs show promise. There are legitimate concerns that have been raised that we have to make sure that we deal with properly. But it is ultimately going to be a piece of the solution. The other thing, though, is as a city, we need a comprehensive crime prevention strategy that engages our vulnerable youth. I will have an office in the mayor's office that is responsible for public safety that works with our communities, community partners, departments across Metro, nonprofits, faith-based organizations to proactively work with our youth. That starts with easy things like after school programs and summer programs and summer jobs, but also includes things like gun violence interruption. Thank you. Vivian Bohoy. So this is just another opportunity to tell you again, it was the can kick down the road. In my first term as a council person, I offered up the idea of cameras. A homeless person, excuse me, unhoused person was killed. And it, I felt that the the uh, way to, re to we could have been able to solve that problem is to introduce cameras and to use them in such a way that it helps to solve crime. So yes, I would support the license plates readers because I think that it's a technology that will help be an added tool to help solve crime and to help keep our community safe. Now there is no doubt as an African American woman, it's not license plates readers that discriminate, it's people. And we're talking about the use of those of that equipment to the advantage to discriminate. We can make sure that doesn't happen. Recreating the community oversight board and giving them that type of ex, that type of authority to review some of the license plate readers where they are. We also need to make sure that when we do this, that we don't just do it in some communities. We have them in the reason why people feel like it's discrimination or there is being misdone is because of the fact they're in communities to keep them from going over to Heidi's or my friend here, his community. It is very important that we do not discriminate and we use them properly. Thank you. Thank Jeff you. Uh, with license plate readers, is a, there's an issue of technology and there's an issue of trust and we have to get both right. I think there's no question that this is a technology that can be used to improve public safety. Uh, I also think that anybody who actually has read the recent reporting of how this pilot's gone should be disappointed and a little befuddled that less that we didn't put more work into building trust in the process. Uh, this is something where there should have been a much more coherent and community-based project about making sure that we are deploying these uh, LPRs in the in the right way, in a way that's going to build safety. That's going to if we're going to test this very powerful technology that's very invasive to people, people need to trust that law enforcement is going to use that well, and I think we need to make sure that that is happening, and I think that uh, until we see that, I wouldn't want to see a full deployment, but I believe that with leadership, we can build that trust. We can get that done, and it's critical that we actually be using, we have that trust so that we can ensure that our law enforcement has the full range of tools and technologies to keep people safe. If this city gets everything else right, but fails to keep people safe, it doesn't matter that we got everything else right. Uh, if we, we absolutely have to ensure that we have a, a well-qualified, well-compensated, well-equipped police force that's also accountable and trusted and tra with transparency and oversight, and, uh, and that's what we'll get when I'm there. Thank you. Alice Rowley. Yeah, so the... Um 
issue of license plate readers is an issue broadly about crime in our city. Uh, and license plate readers are an aspect to help us think through how we can multiply our depleted police force. We are at least 200 officers short, and currently two-thirds of the crimes that are reported are never cleared. That makes criminals more bold, and it makes victims feel more helpless. So license plate readers are a promising technology to help multiply our f police force. They were in this pilot used in, in a too concentrated area. However, we do have data, as Council Lady Hurt pointed out, from many of our satellite cities within the county that also are actively using license plate readers. I believe in a full countywide deployment of license plate readers, we can learn from the pilot, we can learn from our neighbors in other counties, from Shelby County, from the Belmead City Hall and their police force and others around here because this is not, uh, no one stops from a crime perspective at our county line. They don't see the edge. <clears throat> and so if we can share data and help apprehend violent criminals and hold people accountable, I believe we can make our city safer. Radio O'Connell. Thanks. And Rory, this is an interesting question because we've just completed a pilot. Um, to me, that's not the time to say immediately do we continue it. That's exactly the time to say what did we learn. Um, the promise of license plate readers is to look at the balance between privacy and safety. Uh, the number one job of a mayor and government is to keep our citizens safe, and that's why it requires diligent evaluation of these things. When we were considering this on the Metro Council, uh, a wide range, one of the broadest coalitions we've ever seen uh, representing Nashville's diversity came and said it's too soon to do this with too few guardrails. Everyone from Tennessee Immigrant and Refugee Rights Coalition to the NAACP to the ACLU uh, said don't do this yet, we're still having a conversation. This is exactly the right time to revisit the concerns that the community has expressed uh, offer more transparency about if we continue the pilot, here's how and why we'll do it. Uh, here's how we'll offer the confidence that we're not uh, doing so in a discriminatory way, that we're doing so in a data-driven way, and that uh, the data that we've gotten from MNPD say decisively that uh, these crimes and suspects that we've uh, apprehended are but for the availability of this particular technology. I think the thing you got to be careful about is any data that can be persisted can be hacked, and you don't want to have victims, you don't want to have people with medical and health uh, scenarios uh, tracked what their movements around the city, and that's what we need to pay attention to. So, real quick, undecided until further. Undecided until review. Okay, thank you. Okay, our next question is a very